onto the area, but we're definitely not seeing any fulminant growth until they've been activated. We can definitely see a halo around the area in which it seems as though there's a growth process which is taking place in the area. And because we can see the results of doing that therapy, seeing that the patient is showing some symptomatic change, and then taking the scans and tagging the cells, it's possible for us to see this. This study was put up before, but specifically here, we're looking at a condition called uh, Dupuytren's contracture. And in this particular man, we used technetium, which is a dye, and we, in, we actually put the cells, if you can see here, we entered them uh, into the arm on this side. The cells are actually going up, and then we could see the cells actually are tagged and come to the opposite hand on the opposite side of the body and are actually working. What we see here is technetium coming in the bladder, maybe some of it in the lungs, but most of that is exiting the system. But this area right here shows that these cells have homed to the area. Closer up view. In this particular gentleman, within three weeks to four weeks, a hand that was completely closed and was in pain, he can open up, more range of motion, decreased pain. Again, emphysema, we can see that the stem cells definitely will home to the lungs allowing the person to possibly take a deeper breath, exhale a little bit better. What does a doctor actually need? And this is the power of this. There is very little that is needed. There is the knowledge, the information on how to do the technique. There is the kit that is available, the light. The kit has all of the, all of the uh, material in it to actually carry out the procedure, including the enzyme that's necessary. A mini liposuction is done. This is a very simple procedure done without general anesthetic, then less risk for the patient. Collection of the fat, the enzyme is added to the fat, the fat emulsifies, we spin it down. After we add the enzyme, the fat emulsifies, we spin down the medium, we collect the stem cells, you see them as the pellet. At the bottom, and you see this in the OR, you definitely will be able to see this. And the beauty of this, too, is that when we complete this, we can send off this fraction to the lab, and we can actually find out the number of stem cells you actually harvested by the time the patient gets back up to the room. The last patient that we did, we harvested 13 billion stem cells. And this was the concept I was talking about, the idea that there are colonies of cells, and we like to take the stem cells in a colony so that this way we're not removing or separating the cells from each other. There is relationship between them. We can see that there are stem cells here, but also in addition to this pre-epithelial cells, endothelial cells, more adipocytes, myoblasts, fibroblasts, preneural cells. These are all present. So that now, since this is present and we remove the whole colony into the area, we can get the kind of healing we're looking for and we activate these cells. Is it possible that the stem cells are speaking to these cells? They're close to them. They're in colony. And that this information might be very important. So here we can see that we put all the stem cells into one vial. We collect the PRP. We use PRP because it's platelet-rich plasma. We clot it. The growth factors are there in very, very high concentration. We definitely want to give these new cells, all the nutrients they need to grow. We add them into a syringe, put them under the LED light. No more than 15 minutes later, the cells are active and ready to go. And then they can be injected directly into a normal saline solution and be dripped directly into the bloodstream. This is actually our chief operating officer. I always, I always wondered why he would even need stem cell therapy. To me, he looks like a 17-year-old linebacker from high school. He always looks young to me but he's looking younger and better, and his skin is more fulminant, more elasticity. He says he's full of energy, gets up earlier. We mentioned the stem cell bank. Now, the important thing to point out here is that these are GMP-approved uh, approved banks. These th places are tested to be clean, to make sure that these facilities are at the highest end of standards, so that you're always getting the best cells. It is a fact, of course, that if we're going to cryogenically um, hold stem cells, we will have a loss because we're keeping them frozen, maybe about 10%. But it's not a very, very large loss. When we deliver them to the doctors, they're delivered in small vial doses. And all the physician has to do, even if we did the therapy here and the patient came for medical tourism, when they go back to Germany, we can send the cells there overnight. And then the doctor in the office can just drip the cells by just injecting them back into normal saline. Number of countries that we're in. You notice I'm running off here. These countries have gone up to almost 19 countries at this point. We're training doctors in the United States, many different parts of the world. There are many different conditions. Of course, this is abbreviated. We've moved further on, over 700 patients at this point, uh, and treated in many different conditions.
But specifically for anti-aging, what is it that we would look at as markers of anti-aging? If we gave the patient stem cells, did we see an alteration in sleep pattern, sleep pattern improvement? Did we see an alteration in sexual function? How about metabolism? Did basal metabolic rate increase? Um, what about biochemistry, hormone therapy, blood chemistry? These are areas, as we go through this, these are areas in which you might, you might, and we would love this, if, if you're going to use our technique, we'd love you to collect data in these areas, then apply the stem cell therapy, and then afterward, collect the blood sample again and see what kind of changes have taken place. This is very useful because you could also give this to the patient and say, look, your hemoglobin A1C came down. Look, your hormones are better under control. These are all very important factors to, again, give the patient the information they need to get the sense that they are moving through a healing process so they become more engaged in their healing. And if they become more engaged in their healing, they take part in their healing, we see the innate healing response be much more powerful. The most common acceptable anti-aging biomarker is hemoglobin A1C because we want to see that large amounts of sugar in the bloodstream are constantly causing a fermentation process, are constantly accelerating the process of aging, DHEA, hormone markers, cortisol, talking about inflammation in the bloodstream as well. When these are very high, we know the body is definitely under not a lot of stress and overproducing, trying to compensate. Noradrenaline, we want to make sure the adrenal glands are always producing adrenaline so the person has a sense of getting up in the morning, feeling more strength, feeling more active. Uh, glutathione is something that's becoming very popular in Thailand now and mainly because this is a very strong arm of detoxification in the liver. Much stronger antioxidant effect than superoxide dismutase. Very expensive to measure glutathione ac uh, accurately. Mostly you have to take samples from uh, inside of white blood cells to get glutathione levels right. Zinc levels, melatonin, liver spots on the skin are often an indicator that the person is aging, human growth hormone, basal endothelial growth factor. Then there are other factors like looking at the basal metabolic rate, what is the full volume capacity of the lungs when a person is breathing, LDL levels, fat percentage per body weight, triglycerides. We've seen triglycerides come down in stem cell therapy. What kind of strength, energy, speed does the body have? And as we go through, we see there are many ways that we can measure anti-aging, but by giving the patient the stem cell therapy, you now have the biomarkers that you need to see, ah, look, the person's showing me that they have more strength. They're definitely feeling more energetic. Look, the triglyceride levels came down. These are all great indicators to look at to see. I added in heavy medical toxicity because I think this is an overlooked issue that we have to look at for rapid aging. We're exposed to so many heavy metals regularly in the environment, in the air, in the food. And this could be interrupting a lot of enzyme factors and a lot of different uh, vitamins in the body to actually do their job. Just a general idea of improved immune function. We would want to follow something like this. We, we don't really see general changes in cholesterol. We've definitely seen changes in LDL and triglycerides. Just samples of tests that you might want to take more specifically if you were dealing with a patient who had a thyroid issue and you gave them stem cell therapy, you might want to take that thyroid uh, uh, test beforehand and then follow it up after the stem cell therapy, see what the effect was. We'd love to see data on that. Again, data, information. The more information, more data we share, the better results we have for our patients. We can always look at different uh, biomarkers that are not usually panel biomarkers. What would, the C what would happen to the CEA levels in the body if we start giving stem cells? We've seen symptom improvement, and these are sometimes side effect improvements. We give a person stem cell therapy, the heartburn tends to clear up, indigestion goes away. Uh, we can see uh, related improvement uh, before and after eating with digestion. Uh, maybe changes we haven't really focused on the area of looking at liver function tests, but we'd like to have physicians out there who are doing these therapies. Let's look at liver function tests before and after. The liver is the area of the body that is constantly breaking things down, constantly working. So we could take a much better look at liver function tests. Patients all have told us in many cases, almost every occasion, increased level of energy. Uh, weight loss is something that we see five to 10 kilos, better appetite. We see this three to six months up to one year, we can see these kinds of changes take place. We could look at hair follicles, we give stem cell therapy, we can notice thickening of the hair follicles. We notice it's increase in colony sizes, which are definitely telling us, hmm, there is definitely some growth. We can attribute this and say this can fall into an anti-aging category. Measured density, follicular units, they've all increased. We could look at benefits for sleep. 
Is there an improvement in sleep patterns? How many hours do you sleep at night? Do you feel more rested when you get up? Some patients are saying, I, one of my patients said, I'm still sleeping the same six hours and I feel more rejuvenated than I did before. Uh, sleeping patterns, you can ask the person who sleeps with them, has the snoring gone away? Does the person move around so much? We can use a, something called a Berlin questionnaire where we actually say, you can give the person the question and just have them circle. Was it increased, decreased, no change? Same kind of thing can be done for sexual function. Um, what did the patient report? Increased sexual activity, increased frequency, feeling more satisfied. Also asking the partners how often, sometimes rarely, what has happened. Almost every single one of my patients says that there has been an increase in libido. Every single one. Improved eyesight. And myself, I had one billion stem cells actually put into a defect on the right side of my head. I never had them done intravenously. And I have a little bit of an eye issue in focusing on things. And I noticed that just by receiving stem cells in this area of my body, that my eyesight did improve, that my focus became much better. Skin, better elasticity, pigment, skin thickness increasing, skin vitality increasing. This particular gentleman, we did a Vizia scan. And we actually wanted to look at these certain markers, spots, wrinkles, texture, and then see the result afterwards. So we did a follow-up scan. And specifically in this area of liver spots, we picked this because it's something we can all identify with. His brown spots actually decreased by a pretty significant number. And we'll follow him up again. You can actually see the changes that have taken place. Here's a gentleman who gave intravenous stem cell therapy. Really no changes other than just the stem cell therapy. Darkening of the eyebrows, darkening of the hair, more of a glow in the skin. Side effects happened for him. A little bit of eczema that was here, cleared up. These side effect reactions are the good side effects that doctors finally want to be seeing. How about mood and attitude? We can see that before and after stem cell therapy that people do say, yes, my mood and attitude is improved. I'm feeling much better. Again, we've treated for diabetes and just focusing on hemoglobin A1C as that first biomarker that we've seen changes in that. It is becoming more and more popular in the West. Time Magazine reporting on it. Even on the show Puying to Puying, uh, I might be saying that incorrectly, but even on this show, a very famous actress had the stem cell therapy. It was seen by 1.2 million people to correct a defect in the breast. Uh, studies being done on right now on uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis in Greece. Again, Dr. Koliakos with Dr. Burros. Uh, Dr. Uh, Burros is a transplant uh, lung surgeon. So the idea that we can actually uh, change the way the lungs function would make it more acceptable for transplantation in the future. Endless amount of possibilities. It opens up a new door. Begins giving the physician the idea that my my practice is gaining more meaning, gaining more breath. I'm gaining more understanding. I can have effects on a patient on many, many different levels just by giving one simple therapy. And this helps enhance the other therapies that I'm doing as well. What if the person is having nutrition therapies? What if the person is having uh, acupuncture and Chinese herbs? If we can enhance this effect, we can increase the effectiveness, double and concentrate the effects, see accelerated healing in the patients. What does the future market look like? This is in thousands in terms of annual sales. And you could run those numbers yourselves. I, I think that ultimately what we're, what we're talking about is a new wave of regenerative medicine that is developing. And, and I specifically like focusing the areas of regeneration, energetics, and information medicine. I really believe that if we focus in this area with the patients, we will have much more fulminant healing, we'll see better results, and the amount of cost will actually decrease in the long run. To Jivaka Kamarabaka, I say thank you for having me in Thailand. Thank you.